Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over heating and cooling curves. So let's get started. We'll start by looking at heating curves and then we'll look at cooling curves. So for heating curves, first of all, it says that when a substance changes from one state to another, its temperature remains constant. So when a substance undergoes a change of state, also known as a phase change, then its temperature remains constant. And this is an important thing to remember. So when a solid melts or fuses to form a liquid, or a liquid evaporates or vaporizes to form a gas, heat energy is added to the substance for this to occur. So have a look at this example of a heating curve here. So we've got temperature in degrees Celsius plotted on the y-axis, and we've got time in seconds plotted on the x-axis. And you'll notice here that there's no numbers on the axis because we're more interested in the shape of the graph. So if you start off here at the origin, we have a solid material. If you apply heat to that solid, then the solid will start to heat up. And that's what we've shown here. So the temperature of the solid will increase over time. When we reach this point here though, we reach what is called the melting point of the solid, where the temperature remains constant for the solid, but we're still adding heat. So the solid is melting between this point here and this point here over time. So because we've got a horizontal or straight line on the graph here, then this means that the temperature is constant. It stays the same over this time. So as the solid melts from a solid into a liquid over this time, then we say that the temperature remains the same. And at this point we have a liquid, so all of our solid has been completely changed into a liquid at this point. And then if we continue to apply heat to the liquid, then the liquid will heat up and its temperature will increase over this time here. And this will happen until the liquid reaches its boiling point. So at this point here, as we continue to apply heat to the liquid, the liquid evaporates into a gas, and it takes this length of time along here until all of the liquid has been evaporated into a gas. And notice how we've got another horizontal line on the graph which represents another point of constant temperature. So we can see that for the two changes of state from solid into liquid and liquid into gas, that we have a constant straight line on our graph for constant temperature. And let's say we have our gas at this point, if we continue to apply heat to our gas, then the temperature of the gas will just increase, but we don't get anything happening after that. So lastly, it says here that the graph shows that when a substance changes state, its temperature does not alter or change, even though heat is being applied. This is due to specific latent heat. And one thing you should note is that specific heat capacity differs from specific latent heat in that it involves heating in one state only, i.e. temperature changes. So when we talked about specific heat capacity in a previous video, specific heat capacity is only dealing with one state. It doesn't deal with changes in state, which is what specific latent heat does take into account. And remember the temperature change delta T is in the equation for specific heat capacity, whereas temperature change delta T does not appear in any equations for specific latent heat. Next we have cooling curves, and these work in a very similar way to heating curves, but it's sort of just the opposite. So it says that when a liquid freezes to form a solid, or a gas condenses to form a liquid, heat energy is removed from the substance for this to occur. Just as for heating curves, temperature remains constant during the changes of state. So if we look at our graph here, We've got temperature in degrees Celsius again on the y-axis against time in seconds on the x-axis. And you'll notice that instead of a sort of zigzag pattern up the way, we've got a sort of zigzag pattern or stepped pattern going down the way this time. So let's say we start off with a gas up here at a high temperature and we remove heat from that gas and we cool it down. Then its temperature will decrease over time until it reaches a point called its condensation point. And at this point, the gas is going to start condensing and it's going to condense over this time whilst heat is still being removed from it until it reaches this point here, at which point all of the gas has been condensed into a liquid. So we have a complete liquid form here for our material. And you'll notice that we've got this constant temperature here when the heat is being removed. So that is our condensation happening there at a constant temperature. So if we take our liquid and again, we continue to remove heat from it and cool it down, then its temperature will decrease over time until it reaches this point here called its freezing point, And it will start to freeze at this point and take time to do so whilst we continue to remove heat from the material. Then at this point here, we could say that the liquid has completely frozen into a solid. Again, we've got this constant temperature whilst the liquid was freezing into the solid. And then you can see that if we continue to remove heat from the solid, it's just going to cool down and its temperature will decrease over time, but we don't get any other changes in state. So lastly, it says that the graph shows that when a substance changes state, its temperature does not alter or change, even though heat is being removed. 
This is due to specific latent heat. So we can see that for heating curves we've got this stepping up the way pattern, whereas for cooling curves we've got this stepping down the way pattern. And for both, the important part is that for a change in state, the temperature remains constant. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Mm -hmm.